before the intro even starts, I'm going to go ahead and, and tell you, disregard all the background noise. My family does not know how to be quiet at all. But yeah, just disregard the background noise. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a Visco filter for Snapchat. Basically, these are those colored filters that you see that like Bryant makes. Obviously not exactly like his, but that's the idea of it. And I also show you how to add face retouch to multiple faces and how to get a grain over your filter. So this is a very informative video for you to be watching. And I make weekly videos like this, so don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell to get notified every time I post a brand new video. And also don't forget to follow me on all my social media, my Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok. And also don't forget to use my Snapchat lenses on Snapchat. You can just search Christian Roberts and they all pop up. But yeah, I don't want to hold you for too long, so let's just get right on into the video. Okay, the first thing you're going to want to do is open up Safari. You're going to want to go to this website, and I will link this website in the description below. But you're going to want to download the base lookup table. And then we're going to go straight into Visco. And basically in Visco, you're just going to want to get any photo to add a filter to. And then you're just going to edit it and make it look however you would want it to look and however you're gonna want your Snapchat filter to look. And make sure you either write this down or create a recipe at the end so that you don't forget what you do to this photo because you're gonna need it to add to the base lookup table. But basically you can just play around and I already have an idea of what I'm going to do so you can watch me. And then once you have how you want the picture to look, you're just going to go to this button and create a recipe for it. And then we're going to open the color lookup table. And then once this is open, just go to the recipes button and add in that recipe to it. And then because I'm not going to pay for Visco, I'm just going to screenshot this. And then we're going to open up PixArt. And this is what PixArt looks like, by the way. And then just go to the purple plus, pick the color base photo and then just crop it down to the little line of colored boxes because that's all you need. And then just save that to your camera roll. And then you can send this to your computer however you send photos. So I usually airdrop it, but now we can get into making the actual filter on the studio. You're first gonna wanna to go to the resources panel and then go to add new and then import file. And then you're going to want to import the file of the LUT that we made and then just import that. And then go over to the objects panel, add new, and then scroll down to post effect and then go to color correction. Once the color correction is open, then you're going to want to go to the inspector panel underneath post effect and next to texture, we're going to change this and just click the LUT that we had made previously. And it might look crazy at first, but you can change the alpha. If you lower it, it makes the filter less noticeable. And then if you raise it, it makes it more noticeable. But I usually keep it between 60 and 80, depending on what kind of filter it is. So 70 looks good for this one, but you can also change and see what it looks like on different pictures like that. And then the next part of this filter is another type of grain that I haven't showed y'all how to do. So what you're gonna do is open up Safari or Google or whatever, and then just search grain overlay. And then once it pops up, just go to images. And there's many types of grains. I like this one because it's very, so it'll add a lot of texture to the filter. So just save that to like however you save it to your computer and then close Safari or Google and then come back into Lens Studio Then go to the resources panel, add new and then import the grain overlay. And then you're going to want to go to add new and then go to screen image and then in the inspector panel underneath texture, we're going to change that to the grain overlay and it looks like this at first. Because of the way it was turned, I turned it to make it longer. But then basically you can just make it bigger and make sure it covers the whole screen like that. And then go to blend mode. And I like to use lighten for grains like this. And then you can adjust the alpha for how much you want the grain to be shown. I like to keep it around 30 so it doesn't make it that opaque. And that is really it for the actual filter. Now you can go in and add whenever, um, retouches, whatever you want. 
and a lot of people ask how I make the retouches for multiple faces. I'm pretty sure I've talked about it before, but it's pretty simple. You can just go up here, copy, and then paste, and then change the base index to the number above, which um, now makes this available for two faces. And then I'm just gonna do that again, so it can be used for three faces. And then you can go in and add your project info. And then you can publish it.